as you look at the horizontal oscillator circuit again so we did some work more on this side and that's what got us uh, the raster now I'm working my way back more into this area just replaced uh, that guy and that guy and that one in particular the .015 this guy this was warm when I took it out it's only rated for 200 volts it's not n near any other components that would have gotten hot just more capacitors so uh, here's the replacement for that guy here's the other one that came out so let's give it a try Alrighty, I replaced those two caps I fired back up uh, adjust that same slug again and hopefully now I got enough range to lock in oh yes we can yes we can and a horizontal phase control I think that will help us out with uh, off of it. No, nope, let's try the horizontal center and control. We'll talk about earlier. That's better. Also realized something else. So I was talking about how the screen isn't completely filled. Well, this is a porthole set. I'm used to <laughs> working on sets that have a three by four aspect ratio and uh, well anyway this has a zoom feature it's supposed to fill the whole screen there's a switch on the front I don't know which mode I'm in let's try throwing the switch ha. so we were in normal mode now it's zoom mode so I think actually the raster is filling the whole screen let's go to a different test pattern okay, we've got some linearity issues but uh there's vertical, here's vertical linearity. That's better. It's not quite filling the screen now, but here's a height control. Whoa! <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> he thinks there was a little, <laughs> maybe a uh, tin uh, tendril, what do you call that? Uh, uh, tin can grow little uh, <laughs> spikes over time and uh, they can do that to controls seems to be okay now uh, should be horizontal drives somewhere it might be on the back because we're, we're scrunched pretty bad on this side The drive control. I don't know where it is though. So, so, it is on the front. Oh, there it is. matter of I haven't uh, recapped the whole horizontal circuit yet so I'm not going to worry about that. Sound. Do we have sound? No. Just in fine tuning now. Just realized a little pulley was rubbing against my workbench. And we got no sound coming through at all. And I bought some live video I hooked up. A video signal to the external modulation and put on the VG91. Not great.
but uh, it's just a little bit of work, not too bad. Now let's go after sound. What I thought would be the most obvious place to start is the grid coupling cap to the 6V6, which is a .022 on this schematic. On this schematic, they show it as a .01. <laughs> Regardless of the value, what I wasn't expecting is when I looked underneath the chassis, it's actually a ceramic disc cap. It's the one way up there that it's really hard to get at. So. I figure, okay, that's probably okay. Let's go back a little bit further. So I did, let's, let's stick with the SAMs. Unfortunately, that riders, which is more accurate, is harder to read. So what I next went after is the cap that comes right off of the center wiper on the volume control, which is a .0047. And that's the new cap you see right there. Uh, I did something else too. Well, previously, uh, I think we were on what channel eight or something like that. Now I'm on channel four. So as usual, I want to focus on channels three and four because that's what most people use because that's what most RF modulators can output on. So we are now on channel four, and we have sound. Well, so we have sound bars. I hadn't noticed that earlier. <laughs> and the bars get worse as the volume increases. So that is the effect of bad caps, particularly bad filter caps. As we're, we're loading things down, it's, it's feeding through this, this, the, the set. Could very well be this guy. Because when we increase the volume, this is drawing more power. If that filter cap isn't doing its job, it's going to start sending ripples through the rest of the set. But regardless, we have sound. And uh, something else I, <laughs> I regret is while doing this, I was adjusting fine tuning, which is has a belt drive from this pulley here to this, and the dial cord snapped. So <laughs> I get to deal with that. Uh, the fine tuning is really hard to turn, probably has some dried up grease instead of forcing. The issue I should have uh, flushed out the old grease and lubed it up before monkeying with it, but oh well. The last thing I want to do in this video is just feed some direct video in so we can uh, see some actual programming with sound. And then I'm going to put this on the back burner for a while because I ordered up some parts some better, or not better, but some different types of caps to use than this. And that's why these are all just tacked in temporarily and floating in spaces because I know I'm going to be removing them. And I don't want to keep the, the more of this I do, the more of this I got to undo when the, the parts I want to use show up. Plus, I got other stuff I got to finish off. So, all right. Not too bad. We, we do have that scrunched up issue on the right hand side, but otherwise pretty good. Except no sound. To do that I have to adjust the fine tuning so the picture isn't so hot. Pretty common issue when you've got split, split carrier sets. A little bit of alignment tweak up should take care of that. Now this is the default view mode. If I zoom it, it fills the whole screen. So, <laughs> for just a little bit of work replacing eight caps or so, working remarkably well. Also replaced a few tubes that were not so good. But all right, all right. So, we're going to pick up on this when the new special parts arrive. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.